Turn into your prayer. Holy. Close your eyes. to your presence. Grant us access to your wisdom. Grant us access to your knowledge. Grant us access to the Holy of Holies today as we press it in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I yield myself, my body, soul, and spirit, my vocal cords and everything unto you today to be used. Lord, use me, speak through me, and to me today to the glory and honor of your name in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we take authority of every contrary power, every power in the land, in the air, and in the waters that will want to cause distraction, that will want to cause a short circuit to receive it from you today. We come against them in the name of Jesus. We discipline and we cast away every power spirit from our midst today in the name of Jesus. Every power that has followed anyone here today will send you back to the abyss of darkness in the name of Jesus. And we ask that your power will flow freely in our midst today in the name of Jesus. Meet each and every one of us, O Lord, at our various points of need today in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. This morning, we're going to consider a message titled, Arising to Shine. Arising to Shine. And we are continuing with our theme for the month, which is Arise and Shine. So we spring, we take our springboard from Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60, we read from verse 1. Isaiah 60, as we all know, Start by arise, shine for thy light, for your light is come and the glory of the Lord 
is risen upon thee. Verse 2, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. So a lot of us, a lot of people actually wonder and they ask that why is verse 1 coming before us? Have you ever thought about it? Would it not have been better if it's written, Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Then arise, shine. Has it not occurred to you that the need to arise and to shine came before the information of the glory of If you study inspiration as a topic in advanced uh, religious, you know, advanced Christian religious studies, you will discover that every word that is in the Bible is placed where it is for a specific reason and for a purpose. The chapters of the Bible and the divisions, the verses, are written there clearly under the full inspiration of God Almighty. So it's not a mistake. Neither is it an error that this is coming. Now, if you are to write prose, if you, are, if you are to write a literature book or a poem, you would put it literally, verse 2 is supposed to come first, before verse 1. Because verse 1 will now be the justification for the verse 2. But this is how the Spirit of God wants it to be. And that is why it's in our Bible. Why is it so? Why is it so? Why do you need to arise, shine, before you are informed that indeed there is going to be gross darkness? In fact, the gross darkness will even be on the people. Because darkness shall cover the earth. And gross darkness, the people. But before then, God wants you to know that what are you supposed to do? Arise and shine. Why? Because your arising and shining is a precursor to the darkness that is coming. And the darkness that is coming is not something that you can wish away by prayers. In fact, the darkness will not come if we don't arise and shine. It is our arising and shining that will even fast track the darkness. Why? Because the brightness of our light can only be appreciated in a period of darkness. Not in a period of light. How many of us have touch lights? If I bring my touch light here and shine it here now, will you see? You won't see it until it's 10 p.m. or 12 midnight, and then I bring the torch here and you will appreciate it. Let it never take light. But if I come here well noon with a torch, you will think that there is something wrong with this, right? Have you ever seen a man carrying a torch in the afternoon looking for his direction? No, he only carry a torch at night. So you need to arise and shine with what that is from. And when you that is from, people can easily come. Where you like this. Well, yeah. Nepa takes light in the night. When we hold visions here, yeah, and Nepa takes light, by the way, the devil takes the light in putting up light. I hope we know that. If you go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, I think it's better we read it. Genesis 1 3. Genesis 1 3. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Now, another version says, and God said, light be. Who has that version? Light be. And light came forth. It was a commandment of God. The word of God, when it comes out, it comes out to the force with the power of the definition. And that word alone goes into the whole lot of scientific actions 
take place and light came from nowhere. Light be. Light be and light came. Now verse 4. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from darkness. God divided the light from darkness. So before the creation, darkness was upon the deep of the earth. There was darkness everywhere. There was darkness. So God came and said, What? Light be. So there was light. Maybe we need to start from the first. Hmm? What was the first thing that God created? What was the first thing that God created? God created life first. We need to study our Bible. Genesis 1 1. What was the first thing God created? After heaven and earth, what did He create? So, that's to show you how important light is. Now, guess what? This verse 4, and God saw the light that it was good. And he divided the light from the darkness. Guess what? The devil, from that moment, saw that God liked light. And so set his mind on putting out light everywhere he sees. So from the day light was created, devil has been trying to quench light everywhere. Everywhere. And that is why when you come to gather for meetings in the night, road vigils, you have to pray against the powers of darkness that quench light. If they can't attack your generator, they will attack me and never will just control the light. So when you organize programs, always factor in the powers against light. Because the devil, of course, before then it was not even known that you could use light for a whole lot of things like this. But now we depend on light for so many things. Beyond illumination, we need light to project our voice. We need light for us to receive the fan and everything. So the devil is against light. And even in the homes. I want to all this and everyone to ensure that there is no way of life in our home. Physical darkness is what the devil likes. And that is why when your electric bulbs die, you must hurry to replace them. Because that's what the devil likes. That your bulb will go up and you are in darkness. It's not good as a child of God. So let there be light is a commandment from God that every child of his must always carry out. Everywhere you go, there must be light. Don't operate in darkness except you want to sleep. Don't ever be in darkness. Don't say, oh, I don't have money to buy Bob, so I will manage the darkness. No! There must always be light. As long as you are a child of light, you must always exude light. You must always bring light to everything that you go to. So, Isaiah 60 tells us, Arise, shine, for the light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Arise, shine. For what? Thy light is come. Arise, shine. The concept of shining is linked to arising. It means that you cannot shine without arising. How many of us shine? Physical, let's talk physical. How many of us shine to go and see? For those of us who make up, you don't know make up, you know. Because the concept of shining in the world that you need to be is the need to make up, right? If you want to shine, you put your lip sticks or lip gloss, put your powder, shave your eyelashes or eyelids, corner it like this. And then how many of us do that and go to sleep? So now I want to go and sleep so I can wake up. We will make up for you one. And then somebody comes to you and you arise. Then you arise with your wake up. It's not possible. Eh? I want to tell us that it is because of the fallen nature of man 
that makeup was invented. If man never said the woman has been used for makeup, and the devil is used to make up to cover the sign, the natural sign that comes from the glory of God. So make up was intended for people. So when you come to church, all made up. People tell you, oh, you are shining. Oh, the guy see the glory of God all over you. No. After the glory of God be over you, maybe the makeup is beautiful from the ocean. The makeup produced by a marine factory. You use it on your lips, put cancer on your lips. You come to church and the tell you that the glory of God is not over you. So that is the funny nature of man. Many of us use things on our body, things that are manufactured and created for one that is easy. We live very close to the ocean there. And there are a lot of things that are being produced from under the ocean. One of them is the hair you put on your head. That is why we tell people not to get. Use of all your own actions. Because it is a funny man that makes an accent. What are you attached? Attached to God? So, one of the things that are produced from under the sea, right here, that they are, they are shipped into Lagos Island, is with fish. Another is powder. In fact, there are some powder these days that. Some men of God use when they use it, they are going to increase. And there are some powers that are made to be that when they use it, except God arrest you, you will end up sleeping with them. So those are not natural powers. Yes, there are powers made from US, made from India, China. But even some of those people, including perfumes, some of those people that are not Most of them try to come and they bring this thing and they sell to us. So we use our hands to buy bondages. And then we come to church on Sunday and we we want to arise and shine. And God, who sees everything from where he sees, looks at us and wonders what is wrong. So, he created human beings, gave them the color of their lips. Do you know that every single human being's color of lips is different from the other? So the God that was so detailed enough to do that is not intelligent or wise enough to have chosen that color for you. That you have to color it to suit your dress or to suit your, the color of your hair. Do you know that the color of your hair is not dictated by God? In fact, in a family of six or eight or ten children, no two children have the same type of hair. That's why God is giving the number of hair in your hair. I know the number. That's how particular it is. Then you will not get up one day and say, God, this hair, you have not made it long enough the way I want it, and so I have to add to it. That's a serious thing. I want it to always fit the color of my dress, or I want it to be like that of the white. And so you come out of hair. And yet God is looking. Or God makes your hair thick, black. I say, no, I want it very soft, like a young. I want to look like an American. Meanwhile, you want to come here, putting your hair on that Every weekend. And then you want to remember your conjugation. So it's linked to all these things. Sometimes you come to class and wonder how I can forget this. Why would you forget that you are finding your Why do you do? So do you want to arise and shine? First of all, let's talk about arising. 
Because the concept of shining has been so bastardized in the body of Christ today that a lot of us believe that whatever you do, no matter where you are born, no matter what you are born, The devil, who also used to shine when he was Lucifer, has introduced shiny things, even into the church, that everybody wants to shine. So then you see sister, who will cover their head with his cap, put this shiny stone because they want to shine. Because the Bible goes to arise and shine. Now, if you look at the picture, you have seen the picture of Lucifer when he was Lucifer. He had as described in Ezekiel 28, he had shining ornaments come around him. He had gold, silver, everything, design, put on his breastplate. He had new things and all part of his body. He was glorious. He was a beauty to behold when he was in And when he became Satan, he still tries to import us as a big man, big man, the all of that glorious. So when they want to make clothes and you want them to put shiny, shiny things in front of the chest, ask yourself, where are these things coming from? Why do I want to shine this kind? Is the emphasis of the body on this kind of shiny or is it not shiny? Very, very important. Including guys, we wear things these days, we put shiny buttons because you want to be noticed. Beware, pride is walking somewhere. When you get wrong, that you wear things that whenever you go to a place, people notice and punch you up. Beware, pride is by the way. So let's talk about arise. From Genesis to Revelation, we have a whole lot of verses talking about arise, arise, arise. Abraham, who was first told, arise and walk around after Lot had chosen Sodom. God appeared to Abraham in Genesis 13 and said, Arise! And in this context, the four crowns, all the places are walking around and have given you and the generations. Arise means to get up. To get up. To get up. Physically. Get up. Arise. But when it's used in the Bible, it is both a commandment and an injunction to arise. And one thing you must know is that any commandment comes with a power, a supreme power backs such a commandment. So when you say arise, there is an enablement, there is an empowerment for you to do that which you are not able to do. So up to New Testament, we see repeated cases of arise, 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 arise. So, what do they mean? Even the the prodigal son, when he came to his senses in Luke 15, he said, I will arise. I will arise. And he arose. He said, I will arise and go to my father. So that means there is a point in time you will come in your life that you need to arise. What is that what is that? the prodigal son, he came to a point that he was passing in the door. And so we say, no, 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 this is, this is not what I'm talking about. There are some Christians today who find themselves in very uncomfortable and funny situations of life. You say, because you are born again, you want to be poor. And so you bend from hand to mouth. And then when they come home, you take the realization. That as a child of God, I am not supposed to be poor. What do they do? They say, I arise. But the essence of Christianity is not that we should come to a point like the prodigal son came to before we arise. We are able to arise and the situation that we know as a God of God. So, verses wait until they have written an exam three, four, five, ten times before they know that they need to arise out of the situation that is making them to be you don't need to. At every point in time in your life, you must be arising out of something. Out of failure, out of sickness, out of lack, out of poverty, out of depression, out of disappointment, out of being broke. 
you must continually arrive. You mustn't suffer like the prodigal son before you come to your senses and arise. Now, let's look at Mark chapter 2, verse 9. We don't have time to go through all the cases of arise. Even Jesus used arise. The disciples used arise. We will not have time to go through all the instances where the need to arise was accentuated in the Bible. But we'll just look at a few I, pref- I think I like the renditions in Mark. So let's turn to Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, verse 9. Mark 2, verse 9. Are we there? If you are there, say, I arise. Mark 2, verse 9. Let's start from verse 8. And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that the soul reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why ye reason these things in your hearts? Verse 9. Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed, and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth, to forgive sins, he said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into the house. And what happened? The sick man got up, picked his bed, and walked. And even when he went on three later and they wanted to use him to testify against Jesus, what did he say? He said, I do not know anything about what Jesus said, whether he had the power to say, for all I know you I was paralyzed and now I can walk and I can see. So when Jesus said arise, the legs that were probably down due to maybe polio or so, you know, when children are not living in a generation these days, we are told that they stand in need for coming paralyzed. So, the, a man that had never walked all through his life, who had challenges with walking, was always being carried in his bed, just by these three words that came out of the mouth of Jesus. Arise, take off your bed, and go to your house. The bones came together, received strength, received validity, and began to do what? Where there was no room, he grew. So that means the word arise that comes from God has the capacity to produce what was not there. It has the capacity to give strength to what was weak. It has the capacity to make what cannot move to move. So it has a creative power of mobility. So when you hear arise, it is not just anything. Now, another case I want us to consider briefly is in the book of Mark again, chapter 5, verse 41. Mark 5, 41. Mark 5, 41. A lady was sick and she died. And so... Jesus was called there and when he came people were weeping people were sad people were crying and then he told them why are you crying why are you crying the lady is just sleeping the girl is just sleeping and they left him to school thinking that he doesn't know what he was saying or that he's not in his right senses. Imagine, how many of us have been to where someone has died? Someone just died, and people are crying. Do you see anyone who died in your mind? Now, a grown, a grown man comes, not even a child. A grown man comes and says, no, this girl is not dead, she's just stupid. And then you immediately move from crying to laughter. 
You can see that it's not even normal. So what did Jesus do in verse 40? Let's look at the background. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, what did he do? He sent all of them out of the room. It's possible that one of those persons in the room were even those that killed the girl. And they are always the first to come to cry. So Jesus did what? Put, sent all of them away. He asked them to get out. Get out of the room. And what did he do? He took the father and the mother of the girl. And with him they entered where the girl was lying. Now in verse 41, what did he say? He took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Kali Takumi. Kali Takumi. Which means what? So let us pause at any point in time. Is there your sister? You need to classify yourself, Kali Takumi. As long as you are a damsel, tell yourself, Kali Takumi. You need to write up. You need to write up of anything, any debt that has been fostered on you. Any aspect of your life that is dead, you need to rise up just like this young girl. When the word, the words Talita Kumi came out of Jesus, what happened? And straight away, verse 42, straight away the damsel arose. Death has no capacity to withstand Talita Kumi. There's no capacity to argue with a lie when it comes from a mouth that is in God. Straight forward, the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of 12 years. And they were astonished with great astonishment. Those that were laughing to scorn now became astonished. So there are certain things that we do, you know, that we do in the body of Christ, that we get most of those things are inspiration from Jesus himself. Why did Jesus have to send those people away? Some people will wonder, is it not the truth of things and the Lord of God? Even if those people were to death, you should have kept them in the room and asked them to come. No, they don't need to be in the room. There are cases where somebody will be in the labor room with the mother and the child will refuse to come out. And the man of God came there and said, Who is this? They said, This is the mother. I said, Get out. The moment the mother gets out, the child comes out. So there is. Wickedness all over the world. And that is why we must arise. Imagine a mother preventing her own daughter from healing her. So that is gross wickedness, the gross darkness that we are talking about. So there are certain powers that have vowed within themselves that this person, that person will not arise. And so if you do not take the role and the position that Jesus took in this instance, you will just suffer yourself to the very end. And when you get to heaven, God will simply show you that look, this is what you were supposed to do. But this is how you came. And you are not And you get not just to give you. Materials and resources were placed upon the earth. You came in contact with some of these things. But you refuse. Because you believe that as a child of God, you are not supposed to do warfare. Because you believe that powers cannot die. And so those powers help you from fulfilling your destiny in God. Imagine coming to heaven and all you ever became in life was a counselor. And God shows you that you are supposed to be the president of your country. That is the nation of teeth we are talking about. Because you cannot go back again to the end. So how many of us have been held down in one way or the other from achieving what was originally written in the books of the life before we were born? Powers of darkness can prevent you from achieving destiny and purpose. 
but they may not prevent you from entering heaven. That's one thing. So, let's quickly consider Mark 10. We'll just move forward to Mark 10. Mark chapter 10, verse 46. It's a very popular story. It's a story that I'm always, you know, interested in because it has a lot of messages and a lot of, you know, uh, lessons for us as children of God to learn today. Mark chapter 10, verse 46. Mark 10, verse 46. So, and there came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. Somebody was sitting by the, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging, and people called him by his profession and by his ailment. May you never be called by any ailment in your life in the name of Jesus. They called him blind Bartimaeus. They called him blind Bartimaeus. So verse 47, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to do what? He began to cry. Cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, that's what I'm going to have this me. There's one thing I want us to learn here. Where was Bartimaeus seated? He was seated by the side of the road. When you sit by the side of the road, what does that mean? It means you are lost, it means you are lost, it means you are in And then when you sit by the side of the road, what do you hear? You hear rumors, you hear gossip, you hear conversation, you hear who is so, but he was overhead, people walking and talking, say, ah, that man was healed by Jesus somewhere. He, he was blind. So he, he was writing for a lot of discussion by people who passed in front of him. And on a particular day, the Bible tells us that he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. May your spiritual ears be open today to hear Jesus in the name of Jesus. May your ears be open, and good in the spirit in the name of Jesus. There is so much that is tied to our ears being open. Because if your ears are open as I am speaking through this mic, you will be hearing a different broadcast. Because there is a different broadcast coming from the phone of your people that I speak. And it will be empty in your hearts. There is a need for us to hear the spirit of God. Our spiritual ears must always be opened every day for us to hear what will make us to arrive, what will make us to move from one level to the other. Enough of this physical hearing. We must begin to hear spiritually. So that the Bartimaeus heard that Jesus was passing by. And what was the next thing he did? He shouted, he screamed. A lot of us will come to some churches and we say they are screaming and shouting and why are they screaming? Why are they shouting? Is God there? Uh, don't like that kind of thing when they scream and shout. Why are they shouting now? Eh? God has ears. He has everybody. So people should not shout. But what did we see from Bartimaeus? Bartimaeus screamed. Now when he screamed, people told him, keep quiet. Uh, we that are seeing, that know where he's stepping, who are following him since, nothing has happened to us. It's you that are in one place that you're not even to. Please keep quiet, keep quiet, keep quiet. Now, when they told him to keep quiet, what was the next thing he did? Thou son of David, have mercy on me. That indeed is a prayer point. Thou son of David, how did you know that son of David is a great man? How did you know who he was born? Did you read my Did you read my book? Did you read the from conversations along the road. A lot of us live and stay in places where we don't even know what is happening. You come to the big place and say, oh, this person is this is a what did they Never you live in ignorance. Never you live in oblivion. 
not be oblivious of what is happening around you. Bartimaeus heard of Jesus' service, and that led him to scream even the more. And when he screamed the more, what happened in verse 49? And Jesus stood still, commanded him to be called. And the same people that cautioned him began to congratulate him. So it means that when you do not succumb to the presence of the Lord, when you do not succumb to people shutting you down, when you don't succumb to people wanting to pattern you under their own lifestyle, those same people will come to congratulate you. They will come and tell you what? Be of good cheer. Rise, for the master calls you. The same people that told you to keep quiet will tell you that indeed we are happy for you that God has blessed you. So do not keep quiet at any point in time. Some of us, when we are sleeping, they say, oh, a devil comes and presses us, presses your neck, presses, you cannot even shout the name of Jesus, you know, the devil comes, through her, bite your head, bite your hand, shake your head at night, and then you cannot shout Jesus. I mean, you should learn from Bartimaeus. There should be nothing at any point in time that you cannot shout the name of Jesus, even in your dream. So, when Bartimaeus was asked to come, that Jesus was calling him, what did he do? He cast away his garment, arose and came to Jesus. What is the meaning of the garment? In the time of Bartimaeus, for you to be a beggar, you need to go to the priest, and they can find that you are blind, or you are male, or you are dead and young, and so they give you a garment. Without that garment, you cannot beg. Anyone who is passing by will not give you anything if they don't see the garment. So the garment was a license to the profession of faith. But what did Bartimaeus do? The first thing he did when he heard that Jesus was calling him, even though he didn't know where Jesus was, was to cast away his license to beg. Cast away his former life. The life that he was living. The salary that he's earning. The job that he's doing. So when the call of God came upon him, what did he do? He threw the garment away. And that is what? An evidence of someone with passion. Because it takes passion for you to say, this is what I am doing now. I take that side, but that is what you know what is coming. And that is what we are called to do as children of God every day of our lives. So he cast away his garment, which was his license, came to Jesus, and Jesus answered and said unto him, What do you want me to do? What do you want? Today, Jesus is asking many of us today, What do you want? What is it exactly you want? You know, some of us come to the house of God Sunday, Wednesday, without any expectation at all. And it is not good. Because it is the expectations of the righteous that shall not be cut short. But when you come into his presence without any expectation, without any prayer for the question will be, what do you want me to do for you? How many of us came here today with something in our mind we wanted God to address? How many of us came here today because we just woke up and we thought, that, oh, today is Sunday, and I'm not supposed to be on my bed. The first thing you do in these previous times. So you must always come to God with a request. Come to God with a desire, with something that you want Him to do. And so, what did He say? Lord, that I might receive my sight. Lord, that I might receive my sight. That is the prayer of every Christian. That you may receive your sight, spiritual sight. That as you are seeing, you should be able to see also the because a lot of things are happening around you that are oblivious to you if you only see in the natural. And Bartimaeus received the gift of sight. May we all receive the gift of sight today in the name of Jesus. But we must note that Bartimaeus, before he received the gift of Jesus, arose in an icy condition of Jesus. He left behind everything that were He left behind his 
license, his profession, whatever kept him, whatever he was identified with, he left behind. So for you to arise in order to shine, you will have to learn from Bartimaeus. What are you going to learn from Bartimaeus? What is it that you are going to do now? What is it in your life that you need to throw away from the darkness? How many of us are away from the whole darkness today? How many of us are away from the darkness that we want to walk by our spiritual mother and spiritual parents? Some people who walk around, they let you walk around for 20 years of our life, we let the darkness that she never knew, and no one can ever approach her. And the day a man of God called fire of God to burn the darkness. So what are we talking about? A lot of activities are happening in the spiritual realm. People are being given different garments. People are carrying around garments. Some we carry by ourselves. Some we are born by the Lord. Some we will be born into them and we are so important. So what are we supposed to do for, we, for us to arise and shine? We must set up, we must tear through a great those garments. Garments of shame. Garments of disappointment, garments of, of lack, garments of poverty. Every garment, every garment that is hindering me from fulfilling my destiny, every garment that is preventing you from fulfilling your destiny, I burn them to ashes right now in the name of Jesus. I burn them to ashes right now in the name of Jesus. I call down fire of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost fire upon every evil garment. Covering everyone here today in the name of Jesus. So, arise and shine, for your light has come. We need to arise. And we have seen instances of people that have arisen in their life and how their life ended. So, how it worked for them. So it is agreed that we must arise. We must arise. Philip arose. The angel of God appeared to Philip and said, Philip, arise. Go and meet the Ethiopian woman. Preach to me, baptize me. And Philip, the rest of the people, arose. Peter was praying. Peter was asked to arise and go and minister to the Gentiles. Cornelius was praying. To, and the angel said, arise. So there is always a call to arise. Arise every, at every point in time in our life, we must arise. If you notice that there is any stagnation in your life, if you notice that at every point in time, you are not moving from point A to point B, that is the reason for you to arise. That is the not reason for you to arise. And when you arise, what are you supposed to do? Shine. Your light must shine. How do we, what do we mean when we say shine? I want to believe that many of us were here when the Bible reading, the Bible passage was read for us today. If we go to Hebrews, Ephesians chapter 5, from verse 8 to 14, we are told that indeed Christ is the one that gives us light. You cannot shine outside the Christ of light, outside the light of Christ. You can't shine. There is no shining once you have not accepted our Lord Jesus as your Lord and Christ and Lord. Forget about shining. There is no light of you. The light of the world is the light that Christ gives. So for us to shine, we need Jesus in our life. Jesus indeed is that light. Let's, let's, let's have a look at uh, uh, verse 8. Verse 8 of Ephesians 5. Verse 8 is, for you were sometimes that so you were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk therefore as children of light, so that you have given your life to Christ. You that were once in darkness, you have given your life to Christ, you have accepted the Lord as your Savior, you are now come as a child of light. But for you to remain as a child of light, you need to walk as children of light. What do we mean? Walk as a child of God. What are you supposed to do? For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. 
So you can't shine if you have any fellowship with the world of fruitful works of darkness. Any identity, any association with darkness in your life will prevent you from shining. We must note that. Do not associate with evil. Do not associate with unbelievers. Do not associate with anything that is ungodly. Don't do anything ungodly on your body, on your soul, and do not enter into covenant if you want to shine. That is what Paul is saying in his letter to the visions here. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. What is pleasing. Prove that which is pleasing. Do that which is pleasing to the eyes of God. Have no fellowship with darkness. For it's a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Verse 13. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever does make manifest his light. Verse 14. Wherefore, he said, Awake, thou thou sleepest. You that is asleep, awake. You that is physically asleep in this world right now, awake. Awake. Tell your neighbor, awake. Tell your neighbor again, awake. And what? Arise. Awake and arise. Awake and arise from the dead. Awake and arise from the dead. We must understand whenever we see death and death, there are seven layers and meanings of death. In this context, awake and arise from unfruitful works. To be dead means to be of no effect. To be dead means to be of no effect. To be dead means to be of no life. Another sign of death is that you do not breathe. You do not see. Do death. Do the death. That is the death. So when you are blind, a form of death has occurred. When you are dead, a form of death has occurred. Awake and arise from death. Awake and arise from anything that is dead. There are dead works. There are many of us going to dead congregations today. Arise from such. Arise from such if you want to shine. When you arise from the dead, what will happen according to the last part of verse 14? And Christ shall give you light. May Christ give each and every one of us light in the name of Jesus. Awake and arise, and Christ shall give you light. Awake and arise, and Christ shall give you light. Now, we may not have the time because we are going to pray now in Acts chapter 12 verse 7 an angel appeared to Peter and said arise and the moment Peter arose the chains that were holding him bound the chains did what? the chains broke the chains broke one of the things preventing some of us from arising and shining are chains there are chains on the left there are chains on his hands. There are chains on his neck, like the foot of slaves. Powers of darkness have put chains on around the whole lot of people. And as long as those chains are there, spiritually or physically, you cannot arise. Some of us, they have put chains on our necks spiritually, and then when we wake up, we use our hands and our mouth to go and find chains and put on our neck to chain us. So we need to arise. And break every chain of darkness, every chain of poverty, every chain of failure, every chain of lack that is flowing through our family line, that is flowing through our friends, flowing through our colleagues, flowing through our relatives. We must break those chains for us. Peter arose after his chains were broken, and the chains were broken when the power of God came to the world. So, in the last days that we are in, there are going to be many issues that we will need to arise from. There's going to be many crises, darkness, 
and challenges that will come, but we are assured in the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 1, that in the last days, the will arise and will be of the people of God. Daniel, chapter 12, but before then, we need to do what? Arise and shine. Before then, we need to do what? So, how do we shine? In addition to what we have heard, Isaiah 58, verse 10. Isaiah 58, verse 10 tells us that and if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as noonday so let's go back to isaiah 60 verse 2 for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people darkness indeed has come darkness indeed is covering the whole just some days ago, a seven months, a seven year old girl was raped by two men in India using water pipe. And she's unconscious now. Now, as you see, over the weekend, from the state university students, seven of them were raped by a boy, an 18 year old boy. So, this, has, this is just the manifestation of the darkness we are talking about. Gross darkness is covering the whole thing. Uh, brothers are killing brothers, sisters are writing against sisters, parents are killing their children. They 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 are killing their children. In uh, Niger Delta, people are selling their babies because of money and a whole lot of darkness. So, this is the darkness that the Bible tells us about. And when darkness comes like this, what are we supposed to do? When darkness comes, what are we supposed to do? If you are going to darkness in your room, what do you do? The first thing you do, what do you do? You look for light. Now, darkness has come over the whole earth as predicted. So, we must shine. We must become oasis of light that people can come to in the darkness that is pervading the whole earth. Just this month, Abuja witnessed some earth tremors. Around the US, it's been one earthquake or one calamity, Hurricane Florence or the other. In the Philippines, every year, they are visited with one earth crisis or the other. All across the world, the climate is changing, the environment has changed. So these are signs to us that indeed, the darkness has come. And when darkness comes like this, you have no option than to be the light, be the light that people will come to. And one thing I want to assure us in being the light is that light does not negotiate with darkness. When there is darkness and you put on your torch light, the light that comes from the torch automatically dissipates darkness. Darkness runs away from that place. So all we need to do is to be what? Just in the light. And you see that darkness will run away from you, from your family, from your household. Are we saying that we should not be, we will not be attacked? No. We are saying that a thousand will fall at your side. Ten thousand will rise. But it shall not be one. Come here, you are not This is the day that those creatures are going to be fulfilled. People will die. There will be no persecution. There will be no fear. There will be more. Some of them are not even born yet. Because according to the book written by God Almighty, for some of us, we are going to end up in Matthias. Some of us are going to end up being executed for this month that we preach. Because from the moment they got some people have to die. And some people will be prepared to be a lie. In being a lie, if Destruction comes by way of death. Know fully well that the angel, just like the people, even Jesus himself, will rise up from the throne of the throne. So darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. Gross darkness has enveloped people, even in our country in Nigeria today. And so do not go to any office or to any school or to any hostel room and expect that everyone in your room is 
By being the light. How many of us are ready to be the light? How many of us here today are ready to be the light? Our light must shine every day of our life. You have no option than to shine. You have no option than to shine. So having said that, can we arise?